The newly created Jurassic Safari Park was picking up steam. More and more zones were added, and the dinosaur variety that could be seen during the route kept increasing. It already had many different types on display, including large herbivores, smaller and quicker ones, small carnivores, large carnivores, and more. The recent incident with the Troodon, however, did make news headlines. The little critters did not mix well with the larger herbivore species, and many had to be put down after they had been bitten by the venomous Troodon. Those who were still in good condition were moved to the first zone. A board meeting was held on what to do with the current Troodon, as the zone they were currently in was way too big for them to where the guests could not get a clear vision of the tiny dinosaur. It was decided that they would be moved to a new zone in the future and that herbivores would replace them in the current one. Konoa would leave it to the audience to decide on what dinosaur species would get their new home in the current Troodon zone. The only condition was that it had to be a herbivore and different species in the same zone was a possibility. For the next zone, the team would focus on the round-shaped pen parallel to that of the Troodon zone. Preparations were already being made for the zone after this one as the dinosaurs in question were being prepared for transport. The addition of livestock feeders hinted at new carnivores making their debut in the safari park. Multiple helicopters made their way towards the zone. The dinosaurs they had entangled were not too big. It turned out that this new area was the perfect size for a pack of raptors. These ferocious dinosaurs would hunt in a group and could traverse the distance of the pen in a matter of seconds. Their needs were relatively simple, as they did not require a lot of forested areas and instead would use the tall grass to their advantage when they hunted. Some rangers were a bit nervous if all four of the raptors would fit well into the group, but to their relief, an alpha was soon chosen and the others followed wherever she went. The creatures were marvelous, and Safari Park was excited to announce to the public their latest addition. But soon it became clear that there was an issue. The raptors were so small that they were often not visible as they hid in the tall grass. And the pen could not be made smaller as the group would need much space to move around in. Either another dinosaur that was easier to see would need it to be added, or the zone would need to be enterable for vehicles. A few rangers volunteered to drive their vehicle through the raptor den to see if it was safe for future visitors to do this as well. Turned out it was not. Because just the raptors alone would end up with the guests often not able to see them well, it was decided to add more dinosaurs. It would be another very large herbivore. The raptors were smart creatures. They immediately noticed that something was going on as the group assembled at the fence as the loud choppers came in closer. For this pen, the Camarasaurus was chosen to live side by side with the raptors. They were too big to where they would not fear to be attacked, 
But the new issue that presented itself was that the Camarasaurus was a rather needy dinosaur. It required a lot of forested areas and of course also a feeder that acquired to its long neck. The feeder was put near the fence as was a new carnivore feeder to ensure that the dinosaurs would not dwindle too far from the fence so that the visitors could always have a glimpse of both type of dinosaurs. In the end, three Camarasaurus were added to the zone and they seemed to feel at ease, even with the raptors scurrying beneath them. And with that, it was time to focus on the next zone. This was a smaller one, with a playful route through a swamp-like area. Perfect for one particular dinosaur that did not get enough attention in the initial park back in the day. This zone would be home to a nice baryonyx family, a male and a female. The baryonyx is a meat eater and its claws are perfect for fishing. Therefore the water was filled with wild fish for it to hunt when hungry, but just in case, a livestock feeder was implemented as well. They seemed to be getting along really well, and they liked their new swampy home. Another reason why the baryonyx was chosen to be put in here was to test if slightly bigger carnivores could be implemented in a zone where vehicles were allowed. The personality of a baryonyx was a lot more relaxed than that of a velociraptor. Precautions would of course need to be made as signs were put up again to ensure windows and doors remained shut. Surveillance by a ranger team would also be present nearby and to the initial test results it seemed to be no problem to have vehicles pass through here. Some feared that there would still be people stupid enough to get out of their cars in this carnivore pen, just as some people were stupid enough to do this in regular safari parks. But for the time being, the Baryonyx couple was bound to get a lot of visitors to come over. Because of the success they had with the Baryonyx, some of the scientists and rangers grew a bit zealous. For the next zone, they wanted to introduce another carnivore, a slightly bigger one that they believed could still be contained in an area where vehicles could pass through. The dinosaur species that was chosen for this zone was the Allosaurus. This carnivore was bigger than a Baryonyx, but not as big and fierce as a T-Rex. Some of the park's backers were a bit hesitant but they agreed with the implementation as long as no carnivores bigger than this would be put in the same area as visitors. The Allosaurus had never made its debut back in the park. The scientists believed that the Allosaurus was a carnivore that could also hunt in packs or would at least prefer another mate of its own. But this turned out not to be true. The moment both dinosaurs were put into the pen uneasiness could be felt. After the success of the Baryonyx couple, the rangers wanted to introduce another one to the visitors, but it seemed this would only end in tragedy. Where the two carnivores were first a bit uneasy amongst one another, it soon ended up in an actual fight. Both dinosaurs went at one another. Blood flowed and the searing roars could be heard all over. Though the battle was as serious as any, it did not end with one of them dying. The Allosaurus that lost ran away. This gave the rangers the chance to tranquilize the Allosaurus and retrieve it from the pen before it could be killed by the stronger one. 
it was therefore decided to hold the pen for only one Allosaurus, as its temperament seemed to become much more positive once it noticed that the other Allosaurus wasn't here anymore. The initial tests done by the rangers if it was safe to traverse the zone via car were a success. They admitted they got quite nervous and scared once the Allosaurus came close, but it seemed relaxed all on its own. They did advise to put warnings that this zone might be a bit frightening to children. The park grew ever so more as the route became longer and longer. Now it was time for the next big step. It was time to introduce the safari park to its first hybrid.